tonight from Bill Stadium in Orchard Park, New York. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And now we see Dwayne Haskins, the Ohio State Buckeye, in his second year in the National Football League, ready to lead this Washington offense. And for Dwayne Haskins, a little bit of an uneven season for the former first-round pick. Seven starts as a rookie. Team went two and five in those games, but I did see him get better. I thought his last couple of starts were his best ones of the year. He's a guy with big potential, big arm, but remember, was just a one-year starter in college as well. Plenty of experience yet to be gained. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the backfield. Because I know that when I used to cover, hey, we got everybody cut. Oh, he just snuck out there, and they just got a nice first down there. What do we love to say? Get those backs into space, right? And they were able to do that there. Nice pick up on first down. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Second and 12. Oftentimes when you see a running back get bunched up in the backfield, it's usually because the defensive tackle is eating up blockers for others to make the play. Not in this case. Second and 12, Haskins. Open man here, Sims complete. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And he finds McLaurin. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. First and 10. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. So after two first downs, they get another here. First and 10 at the 45. Now they'll run on the draw. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. with a former Buccaneer, it's Peyton Barber. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. The line of scrimmage. No Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss, couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. Now Haskins, third and long. He gets it to Sims, complete. And he gets it just shy of midfield, but that's not enough. He's short of the marker. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away.
Here's the Pro Bowl punter, Tress Way, on to punt for Washington, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice, the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and joking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well. He's got a man complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That goes for a gain of 31. As we've seen over the years, offense coordinators will often ease their way into drives. Many of them don't want to risk a turnover or put their defense in a bad spot, but not in this case. Not at all. Forget about easing into it. They took a shot. It worked. The big play has them all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Call it a gain of 14 for the second play in a row. A pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. The confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they look at the sideline thinking to themselves and expressing, let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. And they keep those sticks moving forward that time with a gain of three. That throw's not going to get them a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talk to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive a lot. Third down conversion here is big. That catch good for only a couple. Ran the perfect defense in this situation. Would have meant that there was an incompletion. They would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. His pass caught at the four. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Already, he's top 50 receiving yards in this first quarter. And he's got a first down. From the two, here's first and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans have taken the early lead. 
An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And the result, a Houston touchdown. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Haskins in the Washington offense going to come up here first and 10 at their own 24. And they'll start out here with a jet sweep. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. The tackle that time by Zach Cunningham. With the score, Texas. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. And he'll give it here to his running back. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 15 yards on the play, first down. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. That O-line just dominated the D-line there. Let's go with the verbal telestrator here because that D-line has a nose over the center and it has a two defensive ends over the offensive tackles. That means the guards don't have anyone over the top of them. That creates a natural bubble inside where they sprint upfield, take on the inside linebackers. And if the back hits it fast enough, there should be space to run. On first down, it's Haskins. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Ross Blacklock in there to get him. It's a loss of five. I really like Ross Blacklock out of TCU, and what I like most about him and what I really enjoyed studying coming into the draft is that he's a true student of the game, really takes after his head coach back there in Fort Worth, studies a variety of pass rushers, both past and present, and the inspiration he really gets, the best guys he likes, J.J. Watt, Aaron Donald, and John Randall. If he can become a combination of those three, let's bid him for a gold jacket in about 10 years. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Here's Haskins out of the gun. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well, incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now it's Haskins. And the throw there going to be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. Incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. Here's Tressway now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Houston's offense heads back out here. And Charles, this is a team you saw in week three, losing to Pittsburgh 28 to 21 in the Steel City. And now Houston, the only AFC South team without a win, a division that they have won for the last five seasons. And it's just way too much talent on this roster 
to believe that they're 0-3. Now, the schedule does lighten up for them the next couple weeks because it, it bears repeating. They opened at Kansas City on Thursday night to begin the season against the defending Super Bowl champs. They came home against Baltimore, who was 14-2 last year, and I think got better in the offseason. Then on the road against Pittsburgh, who was 8-8 eight eight last year, essentially without Ben Roethlisberger, he's back. So let's, get, let's see how the schedule lightens up for them. On the road against Minnesota, who's also 0-3. Then they go to Jacksonville, who's 1-2, and, and is a game ahead in the AFC South. And so when you look at it in total, I think this roster is better than what the record is. But the problem has been two things. Can't run the ball on offense. Can't stop the run on defense in the fourth quarter of games. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. And let's see who's faster. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll look to throw here. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Four yards. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. Now they'll run it on the toss. It was Jonathan Bostic there on the stop. He was brought down. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Second and five. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Heavy set out there on third and one. And now here's a carry heading left. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. Right back to him on first down. And he'll get three down to the 34-yard line. Another carry for the running back. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Second and seven, operating from the 34. Over the middle. It's incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Fighting his safety valve here, that's complete. And this play comes to a halt at the 33, and obviously that's well short of the first down. It's fourth down. that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. The field goal is good. Makes the score Texans 10, Washington nothing. 
these kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yeah. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taken in the end zone. And Sim says, let's bring it out to the 25. At their own 20. Time again to see Terry McLaurin in the Washington offense. Haskins on first down. He'll layer this one out deep for Sims. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. I believe I'm following their logic. Take the big shot downfield, loosen things up. You're hoping to get some points on the board before the half. Maybe now you come back and throw some underneath stuff in order to make sure you get a completion. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25 to throw again. Haskins, it's hauled in here by Edmund. And he's gonna get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. From the gun, it's Haskins. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Yes, Gotta say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in a shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And nearly picked off there, almost intercepted. Instead, second down. Well, Charles, let's step aside. Different topic here for a second. Unfortunately, the NFL lost a legend earlier in this first month of the 2020 season. Hall of Fame running back Gail Sayers passed away at 77. And Sayers, the youngest man ever inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, was just 34 years of age when he got that honor back in 1977. And a big reason why? He had to retire early. He only played seven years in the NFL. But what a run before injuries really cut his career short. In fact, he played the equivalent of... And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. A tough spot for Haskins in Washington here, third and long after that last sack. Now a handoff here to his running back. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. Here's Tressway now, as he's on to punt for Washington. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. At their own and now out comes Houston. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. you got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try and add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going my way, I have a little bit of a cushion. Let's go ahead and try and extend things. If you've got some good plays drawn up, you might want to think about them right here. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Right there, right there, right there. 
He'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. That's good. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. At the 46 yard line. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They'll set up a throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. Six-yard line. So we have reached halftime with our score 10-0. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a very strong first half for our rookie quarterback. His guys lead it by 10 as we send it back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. 26-yard line. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides, and there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Back to throw here. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. An effective seven-yard third down conversion. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll look to throw again. Quick hitter here, it's complete. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Number two, eight yards on the pickup, brings up second and two at the 47 yard line.
Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Hands it off out of the gun, and he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right in midfield at the 50. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. First and 10. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. Here's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 23 yards on the play. First and 10. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Ball carrier. Bringing him down there, Jonathan Allen. At the 12-yard line. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now a handoff as they run left side. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. Now they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Second down and three with right around three minutes remaining in the third quarter. Three's all around. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he fights his way into the end zone for a Texans touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Texans push further out in front. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. Now the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. unit is out on the field and they will send this one away takes this about five yards deep and sim says let's bring it out to the 25 at their own 25 first yards. possession of the second half now for washington and their halftime hole now even deeper and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them they were down at the half 
Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. You were two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Two yards on the pickup. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Out of the shotgun, Haskins. And that's complete. It's Sims. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It's a first down on a gain of 10. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Here's Haskins. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. Three yards the game there, second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. They go play action with Haskins. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Third down. Here's Haskins. That's complete to his receiver, McLaurin. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A couple of second-year guys, Haskins to McLaurin for a Washington first down. Oh, that was a pretty route right there because it's all about finding a window on a route like that. He lined up on his left, ran the deep in route over the middle, and the ball was right where it needed to be. Really good trust between quarterback and receiver. Really good completion. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. And this time, he's able to take it down to the 42. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Second down at six now from the 42. From the gun, Haskins looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Back now in Buffalo. It's Washington with the football, but trailing here as we begin quarter number four. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now it's Haskins. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer, defense. Are you serious? So mark off the yardage for roughing the passer. And I've seen this before. On a screen pass, not only are you rushing the passer, you're rushing him deeper than normal. And he is into the end zone for a Washington touchdown. J.D. McKissick. A 12-yard touchdown run. And Washington able to close the gap just a bit. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic, and it sounds almost trite. But the blocks were made up from offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? And it's 17-7. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was capped off by a 12-yard touchdown run.
touchdown. Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. At their own 26-yard line. Houston set to take over. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he cannot avoid the pressure as the Washington pass rush gets home. Chase Young just would not be denied. That's a loss of seven. Look out, quarterbacks. Anytime a defensive end comes into the league from Ohio State, be prepared to hit the deck. And Chase Young just put another guy down. And how about what they do at Ohio State? The Bosa brothers, Joey and Nick, Cam Hayward. These guys are so well trained by their defensive line coach, probably the best in the country. They still call him after every game and send him clips to get some notes in order to continue to play at a high level in the NFL. And all of them are doing exactly that. A throw over the middle taken in. A gain of 10 as they look to add on to this 10-point lead. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. The Texans on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and seven. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. They chalk that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. It's not often that you'll find offensive and defensive guys that'll agree on much, but one place they find common ground, you've got to protect or attack the middle of the field. And no one was there. What a big play moving it downfield. In Washington territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Now a handoff here to his running back. And not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Kevin, Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time, he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. Going to give this time to the tailback. Give him six yards on the carry. It's going to be third and three now. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that's going to make it fourth down. So statistically, both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And his kick here is good. And that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to Texans 20, Washington 7. 
so they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And this will make it into the end zone. And Sims says, let's bring it out to the 25. At their own 20. They'll look at Washington as they come onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Throwing now, Haskins on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Thomas that time, and that'll bring up second down. He tried to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again, Haskins, and he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first, and it's third down now. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and 10. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. Washington on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 10. Operating from the gun, Haskins. Caught, it's Dontrell Inman. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. It'll go as a pickup of 14 and a Washington first down. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Again, it's Haskins. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. A loss of five yards. It's second down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Washington with the football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Another try after the first down sack. Haskins was trying to get it to Terry McLaurin, and it's third down. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit him over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll try and throw for it with Haskins. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. 
Got to love the catch. I think you got to love the gloves as well. <laughs> yeah, these one-handed catches, that was great, and they're fun. They're becoming a little more ho-hum right there. Yeah, they really are, and I know that it sounds like we're taking credit away from the guys, and we don't mean that at all. They really work hard on the Haskins hit, and he lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. He's at the 30. And that might just submit it. A return for a late touchdown. Well, there's just about a minute left in this game, and they're still taking it into the end zone. And you know they could have taken a knee there, but they decided to play this one all the way out. And I think their philosophy is, we're going to give you everything we've got. If we just go ahead and take a knee now, we're actually showing you disrespect that way, like taking pity on you. They're not about to do that to their opponent. So now the Texans' offense back onto the field. They'll line up and go for two here. They'll try and throw for it. And this is going to be caught. So add two more to the lead as they continue to pour it on here in the fourth. So a big play there. Not only the fumble return for the touchdown, then they get the two-point try. And you know, for the defense, though, they were just over there sitting on the field. They had to rush out to try to defend that. You know what's funny? They actually practice situations that they call sudden change when the team turns it over. I guarantee you no one practices a fumble return for a touchdown like that, and now someone goes for two. Really good strategy by them putting them in that situation. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. At their own 25-yard line. Out there set and ready for this next drive, the Washington offense. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this and you knew it was lost, it was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. They face a third and four after that last completion gets them six. Here's Haskins out of the gun. And that is incomplete. This has been a rough one to put it mildly for him, and after this one's done, you just feel like at the post-game press conference, this team's gonna have a lot of questions and definitely not a lot of answers. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. That's to his running back complete. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. At the 37-yard line. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. On first down, it's Haskins. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. They go play action now. Haskins. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Able to get there and pick it. And a terrific return as he brings this one all the way back to the 30. So many times we end a game, and as we're recapping it, we're talking about what offenses did and how they won the game. 
Let's flip this one over. The defense, they frustrated the offense the entire ball game. That's why they're walking out of here with a victory. And they're going to love to walk out of here with that as their final act, that interception. Good way for them to end it. The Texans offense now, they get set to head back on the field here. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. A loss of a yard brings up second and 11 at the 31-yard line. So Houston 